Let's be honest about this right off the bat. When it comes to creepypasta, the chances of reading something that isn't about an old or obscure video game are pretty low. The idea of an evil or haunted game is one of the most commonly used plots in a horror storytelling online. We've seen Sonic EXE, Hero Brine, Polybius, Pale Luna, and too many others to count. The topic is incredibly popular and, some might say, overdone. But every fad or popular movement begins somewhere an artist or creation that sets the precedent and kickstarts the trend. The name of the originator for this kind of trend is one you already know and know very well. You've heard of the Ben Drowned Creepypasta. You've seen all the narrators online who've told the story to millions of listeners. You might have watched the videos with their millions of views. You've seen the jokes and the images and the references by Let's Players. But unlike so many stories that came in the wake of Ben Drowned, the experience doesn't end when the creepypasta narrator's video track runs out. In the same way a copy of Majora's Mask held a much deeper world of discovery, so does the tale of Ben Drowned. One of the most unique and ambitious online alternate reality games ever attempted hides under the surface of this creepypasta milestone, and just as its creator is getting ready to launch the third and final act of the game, we're embarking on a mission to put all the pieces together. Are you ready to hear the full story of Ben Drowned? Close the door, turn off the lights, make sure your antivirus software is running smoothly, and open your night mind. After many months of viewer demand, it's time to finally tell the story. This is Ben Drowned. On September 7, 2010, a visitor to 4chan's Paranormal Board posted a plea for help to readers. He swore that what he had typed wasn't a copy-pasted joke and needed everyone to listen. He was having trouble with a video game, specifically Majora's Mask. Having just moved into his dorm room at college, the writer didn't have much for entertainment besides what was immediately available to him. In this case, what he had was a Nintendo 64 system and only one game. During his first weekend at the dorm, he drove around a few neighborhoods nearby, visiting yard sales on the off chance he could get more games. He got lucky once or twice, finding some titles he recognized before noticing one last odd setup outside an otherwise normal home. Only one table had been placed out front with a few odds and ends on it. No one was nearby. Upon approaching the table, the writer was greeted by an old man with a strange, almost off-putting atmosphere about him. The college student asked if he had any old games, explaining he was trying to collect some, and after initially denying that he did, the old man said to wait a moment and walked into his garage. As the man dug through his belongings, the student examined the items on the table. An odd series of paintings that looked quite a lot like inkblot tests, including one resembling a silhouette of Majora's Mask from the Zelda game of the same title. The old man came back after a moment with a game cartridge, a copy of Majora's Mask, but with no original title sticker on it. Instead, the name had just been written down with a marker. To the student's surprise, he was given the game for free and, not being one to argue about a gift, said goodbye and headed back to his car. I thanked the man and the man smiled at me and wished me well, saying goodbye then. At least, that's what it sounded like to me. During the car ride home, I had a necking doubt that the man had said something else. My fears were confirmed when I booted up the game and there was one save file named simply, Ben. Goodbye, Ben. He was saying goodbye, Ben. I felt bad for the man, obviously a grandparent and obviously going senile, and I, for some reason or another, reminded him of his grandson, Ben. The student went on to play the game on his own save file and performed a type of glitch used for extending time needed to complete the story's mission. It worked, but upon leaving the area, he entered an extremely unexpected location with no characters in sight. From this point, the writer experienced an ongoing series of oddities, with pieces of the game missing, music playing in reverse, and events occurring in spots they were never meant to take place. 
All the while, an object from the game named the Elegy of Emptiness kept following him around. This was a statue that could be summoned for puzzle-solving efforts and was made to look like an ugly clone of the main character, Link. At several points, the writer attempted to run from the statue, which kept reappearing behind him. While running through the empty town center, the game teleported him to a new location with the game's villain floating in the air. After shooting him a few times, the character lifted Link up and set him on fire as the sound of laughter played. He was reset to the same spot, and after running around a bit more, set on fire again. A third attempt to remove himself from the situation using a magical instrument gave the same result. When the game screen returned after the third death blackout, Link lied motionless on the floor. An ominous message appeared a moment later. You've met with a terrible fate, haven't you? On the loading screen, the writer saw that his game file was no longer there. It had been replaced with one called, Your Turn. Opening it up brought him right back to a shot of Link's body. A return to the file screen from there revealed another change. A new file titled, Ben. How is it that we have video of this? The writer realized how significant this all was halfway through the oddities taking place and began recording before the statue started chasing him. The video was uploaded to YouTube under his account, titled Jaduzable. Jaduzable follows up the very next day on 4chan, posting that he had a dream the night before about the Elegy of Emptiness statue following him. Early in the day, he went back to the old man's house where he was given the copy of Majora's Mask. No one was home, but a neighbor was outside mowing his lawn. Jaduzable asked him about the old man and was told he was moving. He had no family living with him and no grandchildren the neighbor was aware of. But a 